Esnati Loli Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, welfare fraud, Mr. Speaker, is a serious issue. It does not recognize integrity that was actually mentioned by the minister in his speech earlier on tonight. New Zealand First agrees with um, those who are actually voting in support. New Zealand First agrees with, with making those who take money they are not entitled to accountable. And we need to ensure that by making them accountable, they ought to be responsible for taking something that does not necessarily belong to them. New Zealand First has always been in the forefront of addressing welfare initiatives that will promote the well-being of our people. New Zealand First has a record, of course, of helping New Zealanders, regardless of their race, the colour of their skin, the language they speak, or the age. That's right, that's New Zealand First. And especially like what we have done for the Super Gold Card and free healthcare for the under six years old. It is no secret that New Zealand First backed the Kiwi Saver. We did indeed. It is no secret that the New Zealand First put more policemen in the police force and more funding towards Māori wardens. Earlier today, the minister said that he was offended by those who raised tax avoidance or tax invasion in their minority view report. We did not put forward a minority re view report, but we do have a very strong view in this area. The minister ought to accept that there's more money owing on tax invasion or tax avoidance and his government should do something about it. Five billion dollars is a lot of money as a result. Interestingly enough, we have been waiting for the government to get on with the job of sorting out the loan sharks. These are the people who, are, who have been preying on our vulnerable families and leading them to further debts. This bill must deliver for those who are abusing the system. We agree that the government Governments must be responsible with taxpayers' money. Well, why shouldn't we? The government has a responsibility to ensure that the funding allocated to those who need it the most is administered prom properly. The welfare system is a safety net for those who need it the most. It is supposed to be a safety net, and we totally agree with this. Sadly, it is true that some do dishonest people are treating welfare like a fishing net and they are taking more than they are entitled to. It is vital that New Zealand welfare reaches the people who actually need it instead of the criminals, nor the greedy partners who would continue to take what they are not entitled to and in many cases use the funds to feed their drug addiction or gambling problems. But this is, always, this is always easier said than done. After all, Minister Judith Collins could not even confirm of whether she should be taking up sign language if she wasn't able to communicate in the Chinese language to confirm who paid for the dinner in China. <clears throat> Let's be clear here. We want to ensure that the intention of this bill will be implemented appropriately that the intention of the bill will be implemented with suitable mechanisms in place to ensure that they are carried out properly. This bill aims to make spouses or partners of benefits frauds criminally liable. And liable is actually the critical word here. We accept that. We believe that that is fair. It will lead to a fine not exceeding $5,000 or imprisonment not exceeding 12 months. Ordinary Kiwis out there would like to see the penalties contained in this bill sufficient to deter potential fraudsters from committing benefit fraud. Ordinary Kiwis out there would like justice to be done. And everyone in this house would be responsible to pass legislation that deliver justice for all not just for those on that side of the house. This bill has identified important areas in current legislation that need strengthening. 
relationship is one of those areas. When relationship fraud is involved in more than half of total deeds from welfare fraud, it is clear that something needs to be done. Our select committee, I must say, our report stated that, and I must quote this, the amendments are designed to make clearer the criteria for liability on the part of beneficiary spouse or partner who knowingly or otherwise benefits from an amount obtained by fraud. Our select committee gave this bill serious consideration around its implementation and definitions. To be liable, the spouse or partner must know or be reckless as to whether the amount obtained is in excess of what the beneficiary is entitled to and that it is being fraudulently obtained. The bill as introduced is unclear about whether the spouse or partner would also have to know the exact amount involved or the precise way in which it was obtained. The amendments would make it clear that the spouse or partner would not be required to know the exact amount obtained by fraud, nor the precise way the beneficiary obtained it. There are frauds, and more frauds, and many frauds, and uncontrollable frauds. As the minister himself said, it takes two to tangle. And we acknowledge that the bill is providing a way to share accountability among both parties involved in a relationship that intentionally frauds the system. This will strengthen the current legislation, which often unfairly punishes just one person. If fairness is expected when the government is assisting people according to their needs, then it is only reasonable to expect fairness from people when their situation or their circumstances change and improve. We cannot afford to allow people to exploit the system. There's been too much of that lately. In recent weeks in this House, by many of those on that side of the House. But in saying all this, it is important to point out again that relationships are never simple and straightforward, particularly for people in broken homes. The bill must be sensitive to this. The changes must not disadvantage women in violent relationships. I am pleased that the Honourable Jester Burroughs gave assurance on this during the bill's first reading. If only the rest of his team and his colleagues would do the same. The Select Committee stated that it believed that this bill will ensure that the amendment did not undermine the general public law principle that decision makers must take all relevant consideration into account. It would also alleviate any concerns about the legislation breaching New Zealand's international human rights obligations by ensuring that matters pertaining to such rights could be taken into account where necessary. The government has stated that they are making significant savings in preventing welfare fraud. Yep. Savings reached $109 million in the 2012-2013 year. This is a welcomed result, especially when debt owed to the Ministry of Social Development stands at over $120 million. However, we must always be mindful of being overzealous in searching for savings because it will almost undoubtedly come at a price of helping someone in genuine need. We must acknowledge the, uh, um, the area or the idea that most New Zealanders would not cheat the system if they felt like they didn't need to. The simple fact is that desperation often pushes people to behave in this way. To address this, we have to acknowledge the deeper social problems that belying the welfare system and belying the welfare fraud. There are no jobs and many families struggling on low incomes, are battling against the high cost of living. Many of those who would be first home buyers are actually struggling to save their 20% deposit on a, on a home or pay for their children's schools and uniforms. We have to be sure that targeting a small number of people intentionally taking advantage of our welfare system does not have a wider negative impact on those who are in genuine need. It will be a difficult balancing act. However, 
The overall intention of the bill ought to be supported, and New Zealand First will support the bill in its second reading. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honourable Phil Heatley. Speaker, welfare will always be there to support uh, people in our community who need.